Tuba Dia Dolch, and good morning to everybody. Welcome to this uh, new session of the Periodic Seminars. Uh, for many years, I've been uh, studying various aspects of real time scheduling of real time uh, systems. Uh, one being the timing aspect, the other one lately being the temperature. And today, we're going to uh, study another aspect, which is security. Uh, Jen has, re has joined the group recently as a PhD student. He is from Brazil and uh, Italy, right? Mm -hmm. So, but uh, he got his degree in Brazil. And uh, he got his uh, bachelor degree in 2017. Yes. And today he will be talking about formal, ver formal verification of security protocols with uh, providers. We have around 30 minutes to indeed and that's on the subject and uh, yeah. Okay. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Jan and I'll be giving this talk on promo verification of security protocols with probably. So my agenda for this talk is uh, give you an introduction of things that I think that you should know to understand the things that I'm talking about. Uh, the tool itself, probably. Uh, I study case using probably some con uh, like a conclusion and uh, some questions if you have. So uh, for those who don't really know what a cryptographic protocol is, uh, they also call it a security protocol or an encryption protocol, uh, which is basically uh, a series of steps in massive exchanges between some entities on like on a hostile environment. So for example, if you're on the internet and you're, and you're making a, a banking transaction, uh, security protocols are the things that make this communication secure. Um, with the uh, security protocols, you can achieve some uh, security properties. For example, uh, secrecy, authenticity, and integrity. There are many more. But on this talk, I'll be giving uh, um, some insight on secrecy and authenticity. So secrecy is the ability to hide some information from unauthorized agents. And authenticity is the ability to uh, confirm the identity of uh, a message that you received. So you're, you're sure that the message that you receive is from the person that the message, the message seems to be sent from. Uh, so uh, some security mechanisms that the, 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 the encryption uh, protocols they use are like public key encryption, symmetric enc encryption, and uh, hash functions. I'm not really sure if everybody is familiar with that, but... Uh, <coughs> So uh, the, effect, the, the effectiveness of uh, security protocols rely on, the, on keeping the, the keys that they use for encryption uh, secret, not the steps. Because the idea is that everybody can know the steps of the protocol. For example, uh, when you are like, trying to uh, pair your device with like, a Bluetooth uh, technology, there is a protocol where everybody knows the, knows the steps. But uh, the thing that sh you should only know, and the device that, you, that you're using on, uh, should only know, are the keys that are being used. So, um, uh, so another thing, like a separate thing, is the use of formal methods. So formal methods are like techniques uh, which are used to model uh, programs, hardware, uh, protocols uh, on a mathematical and logical way. So um, the idea is that you can um, uh, model things that you want to verify using math, math and, uh, and logic. Applying it to uh, cryptograph protocols is uh, trying to find possible uh, vulnerabilities that your that your protocol can have. So uh, the the thing about security protocols is that they they have like a simple uh, execution flow. But uh, making this uh, sim simple execution flow. Uh, having steps throughout, they are not vulnerable at all, because if there is one single step of the other protocol that is uh, vulnerable, the whole thing is, is vulnerable. So the idea is that you can find, uh, using uh, formal methods, you can find like some specific vulnerabilities or try to prove that your protocol is actually, uh, your protocol do doesn't have any vulnerability. So uh, what, well, what I'm talking about here is uh, applying uh, formal methods to cryptographic protocols. Uh, it's an era of research that uh, started on the, the beginning of the 80s and uh, got the attention of the researchers in the middle of uh, the 90s. 
So right now we actually have, our, we are on a point where we have like automated tools that do the, that can do this uh, form over fish for you instead of doing like uh, manually, which helps a lot because uh, when, when you put it like on the machine, you can, you, you don't have like human, uh, human mistakes. You rely uh, solely on the, mathemat the mat mathematical calculations of the computer. So uh, one of these automated tools that we have today is uh, Proverif, which is based on uh, the symbolic model, which is also called uh, the formal model uh, that, it, that was created by Dola uh, Vial, which is the, 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 the name of the model, actually, the Dola Vial model. Uh, and this model we actually it, uh, it models what an, what an attacker can do uh, to your protocol. So you put like your protocol on, on certain environments, and uh, the, the the things that the one attacker can do to your protocol is described by this model. So what what this model describes it is that one attacker can uh, permeate permeate itself uh, between the communication of uh, two entities. So if it's you and your uh, Bluetooth device, the the, the attacker can can. Um, um, permeate itself between the communication. It can also modify or copy the thing that you send to, to the device. Uh, it can replicate and uh, forge messages. By forging, like it can, can create its own uh, message with, it, with it, its own data or with, or, or with things that it, that it copied before. <coughs> Another thing that the attacker can do is uh, keeping track of all the messages that you sent to, to, the, to your device. Uh, it can actively participate in the communication as like another uh, agent or another device, and uh, it can, you know, of course, it can also receive all the messages that are being sent to, to, uh, to, the, to the network. So the the tool works like that. Uh, there are many uh, input languages that, that it supports. Uh, the one that I use is the PyPy calculus. So the things that you model, the the protocol that you want to use. Uh, and you put some queries. For the guys that uh, had uh, real-time systems this semester with, uh, with me, with Luis Almeida, he said something at, during the beginning of the semester about like uh, a tool called Upal, I, I guess, yeah. which was like a, a model checker where you model the, the thing that you want to verify, and you also put like some questions to the model, which are the queries. Uh, so the model and the queries are translated to horn clauses. Horn clauses are those things like that you saw on graduation, like uh, A and B. Uh, does it imply on C, for example? This, this is more or less it. Uh, and then the, the, the two verifies uh, the queries and the model together, and it gives uh, one of the three possible results. Where it, that is uh, the question that you made, the query that you made is true. It's false or it doesn't know. Um, this doesn't know thing is that um, proper it, uh, it rather gives you a, a I don't know answer than like a wrong answer. Because it doesn't mean, if it's true, it's true. If it's false, it's false. Uh, there are no false uh, policies, false policies and stuff like that. So if it's not completely sure, it just means an I don't know answer. Um, so the model that I said uh, before is uh, more or less organized like that. So you, um, um, what's the word for that? Um, you decorate like data types, variables, uh, data manipulators, events, process, and queries. So uh, on the on the variables and data manipulators, they can either be public, where everybody know uh, about the on the description of the protocol, or it can be private. Uh, for the variables, there they can be either free names, which are like uh, the global variables for the, the guys that for our normal normal programming skills. Uh, they can, can be constants or tables, and uh, data manipulators are the functions, uh, if, you, if you want to say so. So the constructor constructors are the things that say uh, if you have like an encryption, it says how uh, uh, some information is encrypted. And the, the, the structure uh, does the other way around. It says, it tells you how the, the, the data that you encrypted is decrypted. Uh, the events are kind of milestones on the code. So you can uh, later we'll see how to use these events to uh, verify authenticity. And uh, the process are like the, the main function on, on C. And uh, the secondary the secondary processes are like your, your other functions that you have in your C code, for example. Uh, so the queries are the, the, the questions that you put to the, to the model. 
Uh, they can either be like super C uh, questions or authenticity questions. Um, and now I'll give, I'll give um, one study case uh, for a paper that, you are, that we are trying to, to publish. Uh, so this is a, a protocol uh, proposed by uh, Najim Sakib in 2016. Uh, so basically what happens is over here. Uh, I'm, I'm modeling here the communication of uh, uh, two nodes on a, on a hostile environment. So the first part of the, the protocol is uh, before the, the deployment on some area that the, the sensors have to gather some information. Uh, there is a, a base server that assigns some data for the, for the two sensors, for the two, node, for the two nodes which is like the elliptic curve, we call it G over here. Uh, the node's public key, uh, I'm, I'm putting this annotation because it's easier to explain the calculations later. So public key is PK uh, at min, uh, power, power, minus, power minus one, which is given by key X, uh, where X is like the, it's A or B. And uh, the node's uh, private key, is uh, we call it PUX, which is the multiplication of uh, the, the public key, times the ellipt elliptic curve uh, starting point, which is called G. So the nodes start, uh, they store the, um, the, the data given by the, the base server, and later on, after they are deployed on their environment where they have, where they have to um, gather the information, uh, they, they start trying to uh, agree on a symmetric key. A symmetric key, symmetric key is uh, when both uh, entities have the same key to encrypt and decrypt things. So uh, node A starts by uh, ran uh, randomly uh, generating a number X and multiplicating it by, by the starting point of the elliptic curve G. Um, after that, it uh, sends to node B the, its public key, uh, its public key uh, uh, summed with uh, the number that it just generated, encrypts it, encrypts it with the, the private, uh, with the public key. Actually, sorry. This is the, the, the private key and this is the public key. So over here, after, it, uh, after B got uh, the data sent from, from A, uh, there is this formula over here that it gets on, uh, on, on what I call over here uh, a secret key called XG. So this XG will be used by, by B to calculate the symmetric key, which is the XG plus YG. YG is uh, the, num the, gener the, the randomly generated number by B uh, multiplied by the same uh, like, uh, elliptic curve point of, uh, called G. Uh, after that, uh, B does the same thing, and uh, A follows the same process as the here. So they both uh, uh, arrive to the same uh, symmetric key, which is XG plus YG. The idea, is that the, the idea of the protocol is that the, the two entities can arrive at the same key. Uh, so I'll just try to like break down this whole thing on uh, property. So uh, as you remember, I had like this, uh, this figure uh, with the code organization. So the first thing is the data types. Uh, so the data types are the things that define if, if uh, the information that you have is a key, is a number, if it's, if it's the Y, if it's the G, some, stuff like that. So for example, over here I have, I have like S key, which I define as the, the private key, uh, secret key as I define the, the, as the secret key. ID is the thing that I use to uh, identify the, and ID is the thing that I use to identify the nodes. <coughs> uh, so for the variables that I said, like it can be the, the global variables. So for example, I have channels that can be a variable, I have like uh, tables. And the thing about that I said about public and private is that you can define that some things are private or public. In this case, the, the elliptic curve, the initial point of it, is I define as a private because it's supposed that the, the attackers don't know the, the starting point of the, um, of the elliptic curve. Uh, for the data manipulators, uh, as I said, the, the, uh, the constructors are the things that say uh, how, things, how things are done, and uh, the destructors are describe how things are undone. So uh, in this example over here, I have a function called encryption, uh, which tells me how uh, one type of information is encrypted. And over here I have the, decry the decryption, which is like this whole thing, uh, just, to, just to say how uh, things are decrypted. Uh, but you can also have like constructors that don't have the structures. Uh, so if you remember, uh, on this thing over here, there is no need to uh, know how the thing is undone. You just need to know how the thing is done. 
So just you just you just need to know how the swing is calculated. Now now how it's uncalculated. So if it makes any sense. Um, so and this is like the description of how the node works. I don't I don't want to you to understand this whole thing. I just want to uh, show you how the events are placed on the code. So for example, on line eleven, uh, I have a, an event called e node creates the secret key. So I know that this part over here is like a milestone on my code, a milestone on my on my verification. And uh, for example, I, I have another uh, event over here on line thirteen called uh, p send a kxpb, which is like a calculation of uh, uh, ka plus x uh, encrypted by a pub. Uh, this means how, how you uh, decorate the process, the main process. So we, what it's saying over here is that you have like a node B and a node A, uh, and they are like uh, replicated like an unbounded number of times, like an infinite, infinite number of times. Uh, so for the queries, uh, I said that, it can, that they can be either for uh, secrecy or authenticity. So for proper if, um, what it says is that uh, Secrecy is uh, guaranteed uh, when an agent, an unauthorized, unauthorized agent, is not capable of deriving some specific information of the protocol. For example, if you want to check if the, the private key of A or the private key B are, or B are secret, you just like put a query just like this to verify uh, if the, the key is secret or not. Uh, in the output of the of property, it looks more or less like uh, this. So you just check um, if, the, if the key that you want to, if the information that you want to know if it's secret or not, uh, is if, if it's secret or not, it just gives like a true or false uh, false answer, or even an I or even one I don't know answer. Uh, for the authenticity, it becomes a bit more um, complex uh, because they use a thing called the correspondence assertions, uh, which is given in the form of if an event E has been executed, it means that an, ev an, an event E line has uh, previously been executed. That's that's where the, the the events take place over here because you have to check if if no uh, for node B to execute one part. It needs uh, node A to have executed another part. So for B to, to calculate the, the, this, this metric key, A has to be sent has has to it, it needs to it has to be sent uh, it had it had to send uh, some information to, to B first. Uh, the thing about the authenticity is that uh, you can. Um, uh, put it on like a scale, uh, going from aliveness, which is like the, the weakest form of authenticity, uh, to injective agreement, which is like the, the strongest form of uh, authenticity. So um, when Prover gives you a true or false or I don't know answer for the case of authenticity, you actually have to check after this, this false or true answer is given, you have to check in which of these uh, levels the, the authenticity fits in. So, for example, uh, this is uh, an example of uh, authenticity query. I just, I, I don't expect you to understand any of these things. That's why I try to translate it into text, which means uh, did a symmetric key calculated by A contain the secret key calculated by B, and did a symmetric key calculated by B actually contain the first value calculated by A? Uh, so the Output of this thing on program is uh, quite messy to understand. It's uh, basically more or less a swing. As you can see, it's really not easy to uh, figure out on this, these things. Luckily, sometimes it gives you um, a graph like this. So it's better to like uh, understand how things work, but uh, it's not. It's not every time that it's not every time that they actually provide this kind of trace. Um, only on our study uh, we found out that actually uh, okay. So just just going back to the scene. 
So uh, what I said is that um, we, we want to check if the symmetric key calculated by A contains the, the secret key calculated by B and the symmetric key calculated by B actually contains the secret by A. Uh, we found out that actually there is one possible attack which happens when um, the, the, an attacker knows uh, the public, public key of B or, and the public key of A and A tries to uh, uh, agree on a key with B but, got, but gets the, the message uh, retained by, by an attacker uh, and when it tries to uh, redo the, the 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 symmetric um, the, the the pairing again uh, it gets just resent the, the the first information so this actually violates one of one of the, the authenticity uh, aspects one of these uh, four uh, uh, levels of authenticity uh, and for my conclusion what I wanted to uh, give is like some take home messages uh, that is really difficult to um, design security protocols with no vulnerabilities. Uh, formal verification uh, are techniques that help uh, on the process of checking if protocols guarantee certain security properties. Uh, Progative is just one of the tools available to do this kind of uh, ver verification. Uh, Progative can only verify the things that you uh, provide to it, so it's completely, de completely dependent on the model that you give to the, to the tool. Uh, you have to find the perfect balance between the levels of detail and abstraction. In, uh, what, I mean, what I want to say is that uh, you should not try to put as many details as possible if it doesn't make any change on the result. You should just put uh, the necessary amount of information. And uh, that the results by prerogative should be, should be used like as a tool, not, not just like the, the, the absolute truth of uh, the, the protocol verification. And uh, any So thank you. We have room for a few questions. So regarding that protocol, I mean, I'm not so sure. So you, uh, one node can generate a private key, and uh, yeah, it's that one. So yeah, so the, the node in the middle so generates the private key. Yeah, this part is actually like a, we assume that on this part uh, everything is secure. There is no interference of the of uh, of uh, unauthorized agents. So you're just storing the the keys and uh, some other information on the nodes. So uh, after this part is that when you when you actually uh, put the nodes in like a, in a host line environment. But even if you send the private key and the data to the other node, so the the, the uh, so, uh, attacker can sneak that. Uh, in which part does that what you mean? So you mean the, the I mean for node A, so you generate everything? Here or in, in the, the, the before the deployment or after deployment? Uh, sorry? Before the deployment or after, after deployment? After. So before uh, this part is secure. For example, you can use like an USB to load these things on the, on the nodes. Mm -hmm. Just this part is like in a wireless, uh, just That's this part. Is yes. Yeah, so over here you have like a you actually sent the, 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 the private key to the, to the other node, but it doesn't, um, but it's just part of this formula. It, the other node doesn't actually, uh, after it calculated this thing, it doesn't actually have the key A, KA. But before that, this, this information can be captured by the attacker, and they can, I mean, the attacker can generate the same. Only if you have like a physical access to it. Because, because, for example, these, these things are stored on the nodes, and uh, I'm not really sure how uh, you mean that you, you can like just get this information. So you mean you send the uh, the data? Yeah, you send the data, but uh, encrypted by the public key of B. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's supposed that only B can decrypt this thing with with this private key. Yeah, if the attacker has the private key of B, yes, you can have all the, the you can also obtain the private key of, of A. But then you have to assume that the, the attacker actually has the private key of B. I'm not really sure if it's clear or not. I think it's, yeah, I think it's clear. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
No, the, also, also the, the, no the, the model, the attack model, the attacker model is modeled by this thing, by this, um, this uh, possible things that the attacker can do. You can do like a permit itself, modifying copy, replicate message, forge messages. So all the, the, the abilities of the attacker are based, are, are modeled on the the Levia model, the the, the okay. symbolic model. So you you just model the the protocol itself. The protocol. And then you put like an environment where the, all the capabil capabilities of the attacker are modeled. Okay, okay. But these things are all the attackers. Do, they only can do this, or this software only works with these attacks. Uh, I'm not sure, Ryan, because this is like an in 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 standard mo uh, model. Uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, it started with just this uh, four things that the attacker could do. And then you got expanded to uh, these three more. So I'm not really sure if they're later they're expanding it even more. But right now, that's mm -hmm. like what they assume that an attacker can do. Okay. So, so yeah, maybe in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe there. Yeah, because yeah, this, this is just one, one of the attacker models. There are like another ones. This yeah. is like the the most abstract one, where you just uh, verify the logic, like the the steps that the, the two nodes take during the communication. It doesn't actually verify the, the encryption itself. It doesn't verify if the, the, the algorithm that you're using to encrypt is actually correct or not. Okay. There are other models that, that actually verify the same. Yes, yes, yes. The attacks, you said that the answers can be true, false, or I don't know. Yes. Uh, it's some kind of stochastic, or do you know how? How does it? Uh, what I know is that uh, uh, when it's true, it it could prove that it was actually true. Okay. Uh, when it's false, it could prove that it was actually false. When it's I don't know uh, answer, maybe it, it didn't uh, have the the means to prove something, or. Uh, Took too much time to actually find uh, an answer because this uh, this tool it models like an infinite number of nodes on a that model like infinite number of actions. So it has to uh, apply some some uh, some, some not some borders some some uh, simplification some abstractions. Uh, so maybe because of these abstractions uh, it cannot prove some it cannot prove some stuff. I'm not completely sure how it works internally. Last question, sorry. Uh, you said that we should not take this as a, a not a rule, but you said that this is a tool and not yes. the real true about the thing. Yeah. If you have a, a it's safe for this, it's an answer. Mm -hmm. But we try with a different uh, verification tool and we find that it's a false. Uh, uh, is that possible? Uh, if it's on the same model, uh, if it's like the same Galileo model. I would say that's not possible because it's supposed to be like uh, in Kanban uh, I'm not really sure if that's the word. Like uh, it should be the, the same answer for any tool that uses the, the same attacker model. But uh, if you use like a, a statistic model to model some other stuff, maybe it's uh, different answers because you, you are actually verifying different stuff. If you are verifying the same stuff with the same attacker model, it should be always the same. Is there any limitation in the, for example, the size of the protocol, the complexity of the protocol, or no. what, what's hundred nodes? No, no, actually it's infinite nodes. In, in, infinite, okay. Yeah, yeah. You, you model like a... Well, uh, it's you, don't, you don't put any boundaries to the, mm. to, the to, to the number of nodes, the number of actions. That's why this thing is like really complete on its answer. So uh, if it's true, it's true for any number of nodes, any number of actions. If it's false, it's for any number of nodes. It can take infinite time to finish. If you have a, a so complex model, and maybe it yeah, but that, that's where the abstractions and the simplifications take place. So uh, you don't have to actually verify uh, infinite number of nodes uh, one by one. You have like some simplifications that, that it does internally. There, I don't really know how it works, 
that uh, give you an answer that should fit uh, an infinite, that should be the same for an infinite number of nodes. And is there any reason why you are using the elliptic curve? No, but this is much, it's actually just one of the protocols. Okay. Uh, it's like a, one example. There are like so other have any type of curve. Yeah, it's like good. You don't need, you don't even have to use elliptic curves. You can just okay. use RSA. This this actually used the elliptic curve because it was uh, focused on the wider sensor networks, uh, and that's why that was the focus of of my work in the past to find to verify protocols for wider sensor networks because there wasn't many stuff being done on that area. But you can model any any type of protocol on top of that, as long as long as you can model it on the two, because the things that you you have to model your model and you have to translate it to the two. So sometimes it's, uh, it gets tricky to uh, make this translation. So, but you say that, for instance, that uh, this tool is one among many of them. Mm -hmm. Is there any reason, I mean, what are the reasons why you choose this one? Uh, my reasoning at the time was that it was the most well-documented one. Uh, and from what I've seen, it's one of the most used. And I saw like some, like a lot of examples of successful examples in the literature that use the same one. I'm not really sure if that's the best one or not, but uh, it was like good enough for my job at, at that time. Right? And is it still good enough today? I guess so. No, I don't know. I, I hope so, actually. You never know when like a tool is like, you never know if Metal Labs is still the best one or one of the best ones. How can you prove that, you know? Mm. Is it, is it an open source tool? Yeah. No, um, no, I think so. No, not think so. It's made by a company? By open source, you mean that you can actually see the, the code? So, no, you can just add if it. It's free. If you add it, yeah. It, yeah, it's free. Yeah, it's no, no. Open source, it says like... Uh, you can use it. Can use it. Guys in the company can see what we're doing. I can download it and use it for any purpose I want. Open yeah, but you can really see the code itself. You just need like the, the executable thing. I'm not yeah. sure if that's. And then it's on open source. It's like Android, right? On your phone. When you get the Android, that's supposed to be open source, but unless they release the binary files also, they give you a link to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, until then, if they don't, it's not. So. <coughs> Few more questions? Yeah, I'll ask another one. So, so I, I'm guessing that this is based, this, this probe, that if it's based on a particular use case, I mean, it, it serves a particular need, right, in terms of applications. Yeah, you can verify, like, uh, you can verify many stuff, but the uh, most, the things I use the most is what to verify secrecy of uh, authenticity. You can verify it to any model that you can model on the tool. No, I mean the use cases that they use it in, in, in application scenarios. Like, like what kind of use cases you can use it in and, and how do you, my question was like, is there a, like a metric to like, oh, we should use ProPerif here because compared to other tools, okay. is there a quality, like, I don't know if there's, there's a right server, <coughs> right? No, the only, the only use case that I know is to actually verify, formally verify protocols. I'm not pretty sure that, um, how, like, uh, if there are any other use cases that you can have for it. But the only one that I know, uh, the one I want to actually describe on the web page of the tool is to actually verify uh, the security protocols. What, what you do with that later is. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Question would be: <coughs> So, did you think about extending your attacker model with a compromise model? So, I take one no, node, I, I take the so. private key, and see what else I can do with that. No, actually, uh, that that was like uh, part of the presentation that I didn't show, which is actually I had like some assumptions. So, I assume that there is like no way that uh, an attacker can have like physical access to the to the nodes and that uh, the nodes cannot be uh, tampered with any type of information. So I'm just assuming that they are like a trustable nodes uh, on a host file environment. That's, that's my assumption for this case. I'm not really sure if you can... You can model uh, a malicious node if you put like all of this information like public, mm -hmm. and then you can, maybe you can try to check uh, what trust the interest of that. You can do it at least. 
when in real world you usually can. Mm -hmm. At least one moment and see what amplification you can do from that. Mm -hmm. And guys, you have to put questions because the Sundays are not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> Do, does this program have some famous applications? Did they verify TLS or something with it? I think that they really did some famous uh, verifications. Yes, like uh, just proved that there too is capable of doing the same things that uh, famous uh, Formal verifications that were done in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm pretty sure if, they, if it was used to like discover some major issues on some famous protocol, I'm not really sure. But what, what, I, what I know for sure that they redid some uh, formal verifications to prove that they, there too is capable of doing the same things that uh, some people did in the past to prove like, that some protocols were wrong. Just to prove that, that uh, we are capable of doing the same thing and more. You know. Essentially, the tool is not uh, is uh, very much protocol independent. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of okay. I have this protocol, mm -hmm. and I say this protocol works in this way. This guy has a key. This guy has a key, and they communicate in this particular way. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm submitting everything to the tool mm -hmm. to say is this safe or not, right? Yeah. Actually, you have to put the question to it. Like you model the, the communication, the step by step of each of the entities, and then you put some questions about, for example, is the key used by this entity uh, secret? And then it gives like true, false, or I don't know. Uh, and also about the authenticity. Uh, does, uh, for example, if you have, if you have A and B, uh, let's say that this thing is like an event, calculate symmetric key. Uh, before getting to this point, did A actually send something to B? Because otherwise there is no way that uh, B can calculate something sent by A if A never sent anything. Okay. And uh, my level of uh, exploit, uh, exploration mm -hmm. of the uh, security, of how secure the protocol is, depends on how much I can come up with these questions, right? Like. Asking if this key is yeah, it's, complete, it's is this depending on how precise your question it is. Okay. So you can ask like a. Uh, uh, but these are not the standard questions. Right? So you don't have to come up with these questions. These questions are the standard questions in security. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. You just have to check. This is not your invention, this is a standard question. Exactly what I was trying to ask. Like, if these are not standard questions, if I have to come up with then the uh, security of the protocol of, of the uh, the validity of my verification would be based on how creative I am, right? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. But, okay. So these I are established baselines of security. So if your protocol <coughs> conforms to this and this and this questions, yes, yes, then it's secure. Okay. But you have to be sure to ask it to the, to okay, the tool. Then Otherwise, then. you never... The answer is there, but you don't know how to get it out of it, you know? Okay, okay, okay. So basically, so the questions are themselves standard, so the description of what is security is defined, but what is the data element that you want to be proved to be secure? That is your invention. Yes. So in that is your you are the source of error. <coughs> if you verify the wrong data element to be secure, then it's it's, 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 not, it's not secure. Okay. Because you asked the wrong question. Yes. No, the okay. wrongness is not because of the the formulation. Yes. It's just a parameterization of that, that's what that, that's what I said. Uh, that, 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 that's why I tried to give the example of the real time uh, class that we had, where Lisa Mid actually said that uh, the things that you verify are verify are a hundred percent dependent on your model. If your model is incorrect, there will be like nobody saying, "Oh, your model is incorrect." You'll be just uh, verifying the wrong things, you know, or verifying uh, the right things on the wrong model, like a model that doesn't actually uh, model the thing that you want. That, that's why I put like one of the take home messages is that ProVerif can only verify the, the things that you provide to it. That's why you have to find like a balance of uh, detail and abstraction because sometimes you cannot model everything of the protocol on the tool. You have to uh, be able to find the balance of these two things. And, uh, so how often are these uh, standard questions? 
how often are they uh, updated? Because I want to believe most of the uh, most of the protocols that have security loopholes or that are uh, that are subject of attacks in mm -hmm. different uh, in recent times, they must have passed some of these uh, most of these standard questions of formal verifications. So when things like this happen, probably a protocol we consider secure fails some of these questions. I, I think it's updated every time that something new uh, is uh, presented. So the assumption of things are very fine is not true. So this is not a standard uh, procedure in protocol development to actually apply this, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. that, that's why uh, the, thing, the thing about the form verification is that you need to prove about something that you want to verify, but not everybody does it before like sending, uh, they normally just test things. You have like a set of tests that you do, uh, but sometimes, like the testings that you did, did not uh, cover like some part of the protocol that could be exploited uh, later. Uh, and uh, the idea or the assumption is that uh, form of verification they cover uh, all the aspects of the, the protocol. Uh, and I think that you only come up with like a new new questions, as, as you were saying, when something different uh, is uh, invented or applied to protocol. Otherwise, I don't see a reason to. Uh, of course, if the, the question that you, that you make, um, even though it's like a, a standard uh, question, it depends how far it depends on the, the protocol. So if, it, if there was like uh, five uh, entities over here and uh, the five entities would matter on the communication, you have to adapt your question to the five uh, entities, not just the two. Can you just go to the slide where you actually list these questions? Uh, here, for example. I can see. Yeah, yeah for example, uh, the question. Okay, so, so great to see that very secrecy. I don't know. Yeah, uh, KXUB, which I want to know if the the sum of KA plus X. So this very secret is actually a, a formation that this is a standard question. So is it a secret? Yeah. Okay. But I guess you want if you want something non-standard, you can still formulate your Yeah. Actually for the secrecy is more or less just like that. It is in secret. Yeah, but this, but this, this is not a primitive question, right? So there is some more uh, complicated like temporologic expression in the background. Yeah, 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 yeah this is just like a, the, the, the the highest level of abstraction. No. Yeah, but it's right. So if you want something proven that is not standard, like secret, then you have to go down to the temporal logic level and create your questions in, in a more detailed yeah. language. And, and for the for the authenticity, you actually have to do more or less this thing. You have to like put milestones, which we call it uh, events over here, and then you check uh, if your if during throughout the, the protocol, if uh, the protocol itself followed. Uh, if, if it went through through the same uh, through the correct uh, milestones uh, during the, the the execution, you know. And so this is just uh, a very small part because in real life you have multiple protocols working the same nodes, multiple labels, management <laughs> management tools. So an attacker can exploit all of them, even if you verify that your transmission protocol is secure with these tools. Well, the tool, uh, attack, 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 yeah, because so. this one actually just verifies the, the logic, but you can, yeah. actually, you can actually attack the, the, the algorithm used to encrypt, for example. Yes, yes. This, yes. this just verifies the logic of the things, how all things are described to work. Mm -hmm. What are they step, to, step by step? There are other like verification tools, from verification tools that actually verify, for example, the algorithm that you use to encrypt things. Or... Uh, yeah. Do you have example of some real world use case that uh, success story of these two? Uh, actually, if you go to later, if you go to Proverif, they have a list of uh, publications that use Proverif. So uh, okay. every year or every I don't know X time they update this list. So you just if you want, you just go there and check a, a famous. Uh, use case that use the tool and stuff like that. They also provide, as I was uh, telling uh, Farrell, they also uh, redid some uh, famous uh, form of verification on famous protocols with the tool just to prove that their tool actually 
can do the same thing that people did in the past, but it can also do more stuff. You know? Muito, muito obrigado a todos. Uh,